Hello, my name is Michael Nash. I'm a lecturer in mental health nursing at Trinity College in Dublin, along with a colleague, uh, Jose Manuel Granada Rope, who works in Zaragoza. We're going to present part of a study uh, that we are conducting, uh, looking at uh, mental health awareness and training needs of school teachers. So for this part, we're going to be looking at uh, Irish primary school teachers and their training needs. So we met at a conference a few years ago. So we were thinking about an idea where we could start to collaborate in some work. Uh, and we noted that there were increasing demands on uh, mental health services for children and adolescents. And indeed, prior to COVID, uh, the needs of children and adolescents uh, uh, of school going age uh, was quite significant. And the general consensus is that uh, that's only going to increase now following the public health measures that had to come in uh, in terms of uh, managing the, the pandemic and the school closures and uh, exams and tests and things like that. So prior to COVID, uh, school attenders were uh, experiencing issues uh, related to mental health care. And we just wanted to examine mental health, uh, school teachers' awareness and training needs in this area. So what we have done was we used a quantitative descriptive design just to explore the issue in general. So we used a cross-sectional design to do that. And for that, we did a literature review looking at mental health needs in the classroom. And from that, we developed a, a short survey, 16 item questionnaire. Uh, and that was made up of uh, open and closed questions and some liquor type scales. Uh, we used, uh, we involved school teachers and child and adolescent mental health nurses in the development of the, of the survey. So just to try and increase the face and content of it. Uh, we did a pilot study on uh, qualified teachers who were attending a post-registration or post-graduate course in uh, teaching and education. And then we facilitated the, the survey online using a day, uh, an online survey tool. And we had a convenient sample of 261 uh, primary school teachers that accessed the survey. So our key results, uh, the majority of participants reported not having prior training on mental health issues. And when we were asking about their most prevalent experiences in the classroom, that anxiety was the most common uh, mental health issue that was encountered followed by attention deficit disorder, autism and oppositional defiant disorder. So the more severe forms of mental health issues such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder were less uh, encountered. So they were less prevalent issues in the classroom. However, the complexity of uh, mental health issues in the classroom can be seen with the amount of participants that reported uh, experiences related to self-harm in primary school children and suicidal ideas in primary school children also. So those would be two areas where specialist mental health uh, input, especially by maybe community mental health nurses or child and adolescent mental health nurses would be extremely important. So the, the training, most reported not having received adequate training so in terms of knowledge and attitudes, uh, knowledge related to both uh, mental health issues and the wider aspects of organizational supports and facilitating those mental health needs uh, that children were presenting with. Uh, so while knowledge was rated as good for some mental health problems uh, and rated as not good for others, that could be related to the actual experiences in the classroom. So the most prevalent issues in the classroom were things like ADHD and anxiety. So it wouldn't be unusual for people to have good knowledge of those. Whereas things that were less prevalent in the classroom, such as bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, people re reported poor knowledge. But then beyond symptoms, it's how 
the mental health issues that are being experienced can be facilitated and cared for in some way, or what can teachers do about those? So writing a, a school policy or a guideline or a protocol for children with mental health issues would seem to be a, a big knowledge need or a knowledge gap, as well as communicating concerns regarding mental health issues to parents and guardians. And also another knowledge gap was the side effects of medication. If children are taking medication for uh, a current mental health need, then how is that medication going to um, impact on their learning uh, in the classroom? So the side effects of medication was another knowledge gap. We found that the participants had extremely positive attitudes towards mental health issues in the classroom. And most disagree that identifying children with mental health needs wasn't part of their job. Uh, indeed, th this whole area of identification is the key aspect of, of public health, is if we identify people earlier, then we can intervene earlier. So there were generally very positive attitudes to having such a role. Most participants wrote it, noted that their school didn't have uh, a policy or a protocol some schools did, so that, that could be uh, an area for looking at more integrated sharing of knowledge uh, in the primary school sector between schools, schools that have policies and protocols could be helping schools that don't. Uh, and a clear majority of participants noted uh, a need uh, for training. So actually going for some training in the area of mental health and mental health issues was seen to be very important and people were very motivated to do that. So when we looked at the actual knowledge uh, needs, what, what training needs that school teachers have, the, the first three were unrelated to uh, the sort of clinical aspects of mental health problems and recognizing symptoms. And it was more about, for example, mental health services for children. Uh, and how schools and mental health services could find some common ground in terms of uh, helping children in the classroom that have mental health needs, communicating issues to parents and guardians and school policy and procedures. So those were the sort of common themes uh, in this part of the study. And then getting into the, the actual clinical symptoms or the recognizing the illnesses anxiety and depression, uh, which were quite high in people's experiences, also were one of the biggest learning needs. Uh, so even though people had experience of it, uh, they may not necessarily, so they may have an intuition around how to look after, or how to facilitate mental health uh, for some children experiencing anxiety and depression. There was still a big uh, self-reported need. Self-harm and su suicidal ideas was reported as a training need, but I, I would be skeptical of uh, uh, school teachers uh, looking after or trying to intervene in some way for children with, with self-harm as an issue or suicidal ideas as an issue. I think that requires uh, very specialist input because it's an extremely complex area. Uh, and then uh, uh, recognizing symptoms of attachment disorders, would, which would probably be a more specialist area for child and adolescent mental health nurses. So there was a wide range of training needs, but we just wanted to report the most frequently uh, reported ones by uh, the participants. So a mental health professional, and especially a mental health nurse, is probably not going to be the first point of contact for uh, a child or adolescent with uh, a mental health uh, issue. And, and I mean, the prevalence of mental health problems is increasing in the general population. So a, a qualified mental health professional may not be the first point of contact. So for us as mental health nurses, it would be very important to see how we can enable or help other public sector workers, such as school teachers or the police, or the fire service, the ambulance service, general nurses, so there's obviously going to be uh, a role for mental health nurses in terms of education 
uh, around mental health awareness and mental health issues. And that presents a good opportunity for mental health issue, uh, nurses to do more, uh, be more proactive in terms of outreach around areas of education uh, for other types of public sector workers. Uh, and I think in terms of looking at mental health nurses contributing more to public health initiatives in terms of uh, early identification, uh, screening and uh, education programs for both uh, workers and people, school children uh, or the general uh, public, I think would be uh, one of the things that we're going to have even post COVID, uh, looking at raising mental health awareness, resilience and mindfulness issues. So I uh, hope you found that interesting. Thanks.